Hale and Chula Vista, San Diego dealing with the aftermath of this latest winter storm. We also saw rain and there is snow in our local mountains. A lot going on here overnight. It's pea size hail yeah. in, uh, in parts that aren't used to seeing that mm -hmm. here. Nope, that video was Chula Vista, OB, Point Loma got hailed on. Yeah, did you? Did, I mean, you didn't hear any. I didn't did hear you? anything. I was sleeping like a baby. Right, sleeping yeah. right through it, which is good. I mean, I think a lot of people have woken up to like, <laughs> what is that sound? We just heard it. Also hail. something you're not used to seeing us next to oh, each other, at so least for nice. a couple months. So, so nice to have you back here. <laughs> I know. It really makes a difference if we're 10 feet apart. We have Absolutely. to be like, hey, hey, Eric, over there. We, but now I can talk. We could chat about hail and, and the weather this much closer. It's more of a conversation <laughs> yes. this way. It feels a lot cozier. Uh, let's go from the hail now to the snow, shall we? Yeah. We'll show you where it is snowing. Uh, so yeah, Julian, Ooh. oh, the skies are clearing a bit there right over Main Street, but you see that beautiful coating of snow? It's going to be icy, just a heads up. Main, Main Street right there, temperatures have been below freezing for quite a few hours. So there's that slow going truck. Good job, because we're all watching you. Uh, <laughs> and we do have to mention the school closures. Uh, Spencer Valley, Julian Elementary, Julian High School Districts all have canceled classes for today. Warner Union will have a two hour late start and you see why you know it's not going to be the best conditions to drive through. I know people get so excited when we get snow in our mountains. There's still a little bit of lingering snow coming in Mount Palomar and then further south just south of Pine Valley along the eight. That may be a pretty slick one because look how cold it is. Mount Laguna right now you're at 27 degrees 30 in Julian 26 in Palomar uh, 44 in Del Mar. So many people across the coast and inland valleys clear skies which of course leads to that big chill factor uh, when it comes to traffic. I do suspect that you'll need chains or snow tires at least going up into those high elevations. So as of last night, they did issue chain controls. That's, uh, you know, across places like Pine Valley Sunrise Highway. If you're headed to Palomar, just a heads up. You will definitely want to have those, uh, you know, proper precautions, those tools with you mm -hmm. to get you through the icy morning. So big weather day, but also a big day when it comes to our mask rules here this morning. The statewide indoor mask mandate for fully vaccinated people is no longer in effect. And the San Diego Unified School District is lifting some pandemic restrictions. And we have team coverage for you this morning. Chris Grow has more on what students can expect, but we're going to start with Dana Marie McNichol. She explains the changes happening today across California. Uh, well, good morning to you both. Well, as this mask indoor mask mandate is now lifted, I'm going to share with you where you might need to keep that mask around a couple of different areas in California. But first, we got some reactions from local businesses, people who are excited about keeping that mask off, but others who are saying, I'm going to still wear it. I have a nice face, so I want to show my smile. It's just easier to work. I will still wear my mask. I'm fully vaccinated. I've actually had COVID, but you know, I, I still got to protect loved ones and other ones that are at risk. Well, that's a similar message echoed by California Health Secretary who emphasized that yes, while the statewide mandate is going away for vaccinated people in indoor places like stores, gyms, bars, movie theaters, it's still strongly recommended to wear one. It's also up to individual businesses to decide how to enforce these rules. Now, keep in mind, though, there will be some places where wearing a mask is non-negotiable. Regardless of vaccination status, people need them on public transit, health care settings, homeless shelters, as well as child care facilities and K through 12 schools. Now, as for mega events beginning today, organizers of indoor events with a thousand or more attendees will be required to check for vaccination status or negative COVID test results. Assistant Health and Human Services Secretary Rachel Levine also points out that those who have recently had COVID do need to cover up. If you're leaving isolation after day five, you should wear a mask until day 10. And even with this official mandate going away for those who are fully vaccinated, individuals in California can still choose to require employees as well as customers to wear a mask in their store. So maybe keep that mask on hand. You never know when you might be put into one of those situations. So although for most here, those who are vaccinated will no longer need to worry about a mask, just maybe keep one on hand. You never might know. All right, well, live in San Diego, I'm Dayton Marie McNichol. I'll send back to you. Dana Marie, thank you. And coming up at 630, we're going to take a closer look at how the mask requirement for unvaccinated people will be enforced and what this change means for many businesses. Now, starting today, some pandemic restrictions will be pulled back for students and staff at San Diego Unified. 
MCBS 8's Chris Grow live outside district headquarters, in University Heights now with uh, everything families need to know here. Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And similar to how we are right now, the mask mandate is lifted for when you are outdoors. Now that goes, of course, for both students and staff. And if you take a look here again, we'll, we'll break down kind of the new changes, if you will. Basically, again, when you're outdoors, masks are no longer required, but indoors they still will be, regardless of vaccination staff for both students and staff. Restrictions are also being lifted, though, on school field trips. That is a big change here since we've returned to in person learning during this pandemic. So when they do an indoor field trip, uh, for instance, if they go to a science center during the time in which they're indoors, those mask mandates still apply for the kids and the staff, even if they are not on school property. But when they are outdoors, if it's an outdoor field trip, they can go without the masks. Now the district says that positive COVID-19 cases in its schools have decreased 56% since the Omicron peak. And again, that indoor mask mandate will be reassessed by the state come February 28th. So the district says that it's going to remain in place for at least the next two weeks. But in the meantime, they continue to consult with both county and UCSD health officials and experts to try to craft um, these policies and changes when it, they can. So again, of course, we'll keep an eye in case anything does change sooner. But for now, that indoor mask mandate staying in place until at least February 28th. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris Grow, thank you very much for that. And this morning, Naval Air Station North Island back to normal operations after concerns over a car bomb led to a lockdown. The Navy says a driver suspected of carrying bomb making materials pulled up yesterday. The main gate was shut down for nearly five hours as officials held the driver for questioning. No other details have been released. Police need your help finding the thieves who broke into a skate shop in Kearney Mesa. It happened at Sin City Skates off Claremont Mesa Boulevard. Employees shared these pictures on Instagram showing two men inside the shop here. Take a look at your screen. They say they stole several things like helmets, pads, wheels, skates, even laptops. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. Well, if you're an SDG&E customer and you're amped up about these rising electricity bills, here's an opportunity to provide your feedback. The California Public Utilities Commission will be holding workshops on the affordability of the electrical system. These all-day virtual events are open for public comments, and they will be held on February 28th and March 1st. For more information on how to participate, head to cbs8.com and just click on the Help button. Let's check in on that forecast here. You've seen some uh, hail in all different yeah. parts of town here. I mean, really, look at this. We showed you some hail in Chula Vista. There it is, hail in Ocean Beach. So thank you, Dan Gallagher, sending this photo in. He said he heard thunder, then heavy rain, and then this hail. I mean, it sounds loud, especially when it hits your furniture like that. He also pointed out his cat was not happy about it. I think a lot of pets were like, ah, what is that sound outside? The thunder, of course, can startle all of us. Uh, and it was pretty loud. I mean, we had this storm system come through. It brought us that unstable air. There was even a beach hazard statement because of lightning strikes across the ocean. So a lot of that passed through San Diego, the coast, inland. And then what it, we're seeing right now would be the snow still hanging on across our high elevation. So this is that beautiful view from the Mount Laguna Lodge, the live camera that's set up there. This is the rooftop of the lodge. And then you see, of course, the roadways. That's pretty icy, pretty slick. Snow has piled up on the sides. Those snow plows were coming in. We saw one go through earlier this morning. Uh, so they'll be clearing a lot of this to make it safe for you to go out there and enjoy. But a lot of San Diegans love to head out this direction when we get this nice coating. I will say initial reports as of last night showed about an inch or so of that snowfall. So it's not a lot of accumulation, but hopefully it'll stick around for at least another day for you to get out there. Here's a look at our satellite radar where you can see where some of that is still hanging on right there in Palomar. Uh, you can see why some of the schools are closed across the mountains. Julian, uh, that's included in the school closures for today. Areas like Pine Valley, that's icy. That's it's all snow that's coming through your neighborhoods and then further up north, as I mentioned, Palomar. So snow levels about 4,000 feet or so. We saw reports of it dropping down to 3,500 feet to the north of us. So this is cold air that's now passing through. The area of low pressure is right here. The center of it is and on the tail end of it, we get that cold, unstable air, which is why we got the thunder, the lightning, the hail that tends to come through when there is unstable air mass. Now, right now, the cold air mass is 
hanging on. So you have a lot of clear skies as the system moved along and that left us with frigid temperatures. It's 43 in Oceanside, 39 right now in Fallbrook, 39 Escondido, 34 in Ramona. So we are just now reaching that uh, sunrise time in the next 20 minutes or so. So we're, we're about to get to the coldest time of our day. Palomar, you're below freezing in the 20s, but look at that big change. I mean, 13 to 18 degrees cooler right now. Our afternoon, you'll be hanging in the low to mid 60s. That includes the coast and inland area. So by about noon, you'll likely see more sunshine at least, but yeah, temperatures will still feel kind of cool, cooler than average before we warm right back up again. Here's a check of what's going on with our traffic. So uh, as of last night, I mentioned earlier, chain controls were in effect, and I suspect that's still the case. We have not gotten the latest update from CHP, but because of the snow and the ice that we're seeing, uh, it's always safe to have that with you if you're going this direction through Julian Pine Valley. Uh, if you're headed along the eight, just into those mountains, it's just a good idea to have that. Take, you know, extra supplies with you if you want to spend the day up there to enjoy some of that snow. Uh, just, of course, respect the neighbors, the residents who live there year round. And then let's also show you what's happening right here in Chula Vista. So on the five, this is northbound just before the mile of cars away. There's this crash. A lane is blocked, so that's on the five northbound side. If you're coming up from Chula Vista through National City, perhaps that's going to maybe slow you down for now, though. Not seeing much slowing.